This demonstration will introduce you to Stateflow which is one of MATLAB's Simulink most powerful tools for modeling and simulating a finite state machine. In plain English, a finite state machine is a block diagram with special notation that can help make modeling an event-driven system very simple. A finite state machine, hence Stateflow, can be a very powerful and valuable tool for embedded system development. In this demonstration, we will use a very simple example that model a Thai traffic light control algorithm. Let's start creating a Simulink model for our target. First, by creating a new folder for our project. Name this folder Traffic Light Demo. Change our working directory to this newly created folder by double-clicking on the folder. Then, create a new Simulink model and save this model as Thai Traffic Light. Open the Simulink Library Browser. Select Rapid STM32 as the target of our Simulink model. Make sure that the target board is FIO standard. From Rapid STM32 Device Configuration Sublibrary. Insert the setup system clock and the auto compile blocks in our Simulink model. Next, from Stateflow sublibrary, insert the chart block in our model. The chart block is where we can model our finite state machine model. Double click on the block to open it. A traffic light has three states, stop, red light on, go, green light on, and prepare to stop, yellow light on. In a state flow model, each state is represented by a rectangular block. Drag our first state block to our state flow model and name this state stop. Copy states by drag and drop with the right mouse button and change the name of each state accordingly. Next, add transition lines. These lines indicate to which of the next states that the system, in the current state, can transit. Various conditions to trigger the transitions and actions to be taken while transit between states can be flexibly defined too, but for now, we will just simply add transition lines according to our traffic light control algorithm, from red to green, from green to yellow, and from yellow to red. Next, add output from our state flow chart to our Simulink model. These include three output signals to control the red, yellow, and green traffic lights. Define the name as red LED and the data type of the output signal to be one byte, U and date. You can see that our state flow chart now has an output port to control the red light. Similarly, add more output signal ports for the yellow and green lights. Notice that our chart now has three output ports to control the three lights. Next, add an event input from Simulink to our chart and call this event tick. This tick event is used to control the timing of our state flow chart. It indicates how often the chart is updated. Use rising trigger type. With rising trigger type, our chart will update every time the input tick signal goes from logic low to high. Notice the input port for our tick signal. Use a pulse generator to generate the tick signal to control our state flow chart.
configure the tick generator with 0.04 seconds period and 50% duty cycle. Our state flow chart will update at every 0.04 seconds interval, coinciding with every rising edge of the pulse signal from the tick generator block. Next, from the sync sub library, add a scope block for use to monitor the control signals. Add additional axes, and do not limit the size of log data. Press control key on the keyboard, while clicking on the two blocks, will connect all signal lines at once. We will now add three more blocks to simulate the traffic lights. From Rapid STM32 add-on module sub-library, drag and drop a LED block to our Simulink model. Rename the block accordingly. Add two more LED blocks by drag and drop with the right mouse button. Then, configure and rename each block as yellow and green lights. Set the index and color to display accordingly. Add and connect additional signal lines by drag and drop with the right mouse button. We will now add actions to be taken when entering and exiting each state. In our case, this is just turning each light on and off respectively. The entry command will be executed when entering the state, while the exit command will be executed when exiting the state. These actions use standard MATLAB command line functions and format. Go ahead and define actions for all three states. Next, we will add conditions under which transitions between each states may occur. For the traffic light controller, this is pretty simple. We can use the length of time that each light must be on. In other real-world applications, triggering events and actions to be taken during each transition may be more complex. Notice that the command after is used to indicate that each state may transit after a specified amount of time has elapsed. The elapsed time specified in this example is arbitrary. Next, add a default transition to indicate the very first state for the state machine to be in when it starts. For this example, the controller will be put in stop state when begin execution. Update the diagram twice or until all blocks display correct sample time of 0.02 seconds. The sample time is 0.02 seconds because the tick generator is set to 0.04 seconds period and 50% duty cycle, so the generated code from our model will update at 50 Hz sample rate, which is derived from 1 divided by 0.02. When all blocks display correct sample time of 0.02 seconds, we are ready to proceed. Let's run the simulation for 30 seconds. Notice the simulation time while running. The simulation run very fast. Kind of jumping from 0 to about 19 and 30 seconds almost instantaneously. This is normal. By default, Simulink simulation does not run in real time. The simulation will run as fast as possible, depending on your computer speed. We can make Simulink model run in near real time by adding the real time block from Rapid STM32 add-on sub library. 
The real-time block works by holding Simulink simulation from proceeding until a correct next sample time is reached. The next sample time is measured from the host PC CPU clock. For a system running under MS Windows, this is generally accurate to 16 milliseconds. This is accurate enough for graphical user interface algorithm simulation testing with state flow. Double click on the block to open the blocks configuration window. The default option sets the sample time to inherit. That is the value of minus 1. When a sample time is set to minus 1, the real time block will automatically search and use the appropriate sample time for correct performance. This option generally works fine for most cases. A custom setting may be used to specify your own sample time for the real-time block. For correct operation, real-time block sample time should be set to the smallest time step of the system. For this example, let's leave the sample time of the real-time block to default. Update the diagram until the real-time block displays correct sample time of 0.02 .02 seconds. There is one limitation about the use of the real-time block. To achieve real-time performance, the smallest simulation time step in the system should not be less than 1 milliseconds. Double-click on the state flow chart block to open the state diagram, then run the simulation. One great thing about state flow is that, you can watch state changes in real-time while simulating, which can be very useful when debugging. With the help of the real-time block, you can watch state changes in real-time, as shown here. This is the end of the first of this two parts training video. In the second part, you will learn how to use a digital output block, generate and compile the source code, and run the target. Thanks for watching.